My name is Ronald Wendt. I'm the son, the second oldest son of Barbara Ann Wendt, which passed away in a fire with two other individuals, one being my brother's wife and the other one a friend of the family and a dog named Lexi. I'm the only one from the family that left Canada and started a new life in the United States. And I never thought the day would come where I would preach my own mother's funeral. But my mom was a, a very kind lady. She took in many people off the streets. Yeah. And she loved many people. She loved gardening. And she loved many individuals. She didn't deserve to die in that fire. You know what was said? My brother told me when I questioned him. He said it should have been him in that fire. But God has a purpose for everything. David, King David in the Bible said in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, when his son passed away and he was dead, 
He said, where should I fast? Can I bring him back again? And David said, I shall go to him. You know, our loved ones that pass away, just like this earth, the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my words will never pass away. You know, this earth is going to be burned up with fire and the elements are going to mark, melt with fervent heat. This is what the scripture says. <coughs> Rochelle, which was my brother's companion, was 48 years old. Doug Patterson was 60 year, 67 years old. They all died with the dog in the fire named Lexi. My mother, Barb, was her name to the friends. Born November 25th, the day before my birthday. And I didn't get to see another Mother's Day. She's born in Saskatchewan, raised in Denholm, and lived, as you know, most of her life in Alberta. And many of you are friends of hers that I don't know. But I thank you for coming to the funeral today. And if I may, I want to share a few scriptures out of this Bible. Please be reverent. I don't want anybody to be arrested. This is not a place to arrest people and bust people. This is humanity. Ecclesiastes 5 and 15 says, As he came forth out of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came and still take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. Out of the ground you came and was taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt be. We're just a handful of clay that the potter found along the way, but a scripture tells us in the New Testament that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God formed Adam out of dust, out of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That, the only thing I can praise God for, that's not my mom in that casket and those bird remains. That's not my mom's, that was just the shell that she was riding around in. You're not the you, real you. It's the man within the man. This is greater than just dying with the biggest toys and whoever has the best toys wins in life. We have an appointment with God, the Bible says, that the judgment is a point in that the man wants to die, then after this, the judgment. And the books that's written in the Bible will be opened and will be judged under the things written in this book. Barabbas was a murderer at the time of Jesus' at the time of Jesus' death. And that day a murderer got away and Jesus took the place of Barabbas. That's what Jesus Christ has come to do. He's come to be a propitiation for our sins. That's our only escape out of this world. Jeremiah 18 in the Bible says, As clay in the potter's hand, so are we, O you house of Israel. We have held many things in our hands, all of us, and lost them. But I'm here to tell you today what we place in God's hands that we will still possess. Hebrews 9 and 27 says, And as it is pointed unto men or women once to die, he said, Then after this judgment, you bet to take note tonight, ten out of ten people die. Job said, As a man that is born of the woman of a few days and full of trouble, it's like sparks that fly upward. But so is also the resurrection of the dead. 
You say you believe in the raising of the dead? I'm here to tell you right now that Christ died for your sins. He's not in that tomb no more. He raised and he's alive forevermore. And praise God, I seen a light from heaven when I was in a graveyard high on LSD 40 years ago. And it shone from another universe and it told me to enter in at the straight gate. For broad's the way that leads to destruction. Yes, there's a fiery hell for those that don't believe and don't receive. But we've got to get it right today. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It's sown in corruption and raised in incorruption. See, we're going to be given a new body. It's sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. Sown in weakness and raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. It's going to be raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Matthews 22 and 11, Jesus said, it was given us a parable of a wedding feast. And in those days in Israel, when you went into a wedding feast, they would give you a garment at the door. My youngest sister, Debbie, second youngest sister, Debbie, wanted to wrap my mom's body in a white linen cloth. And that's how they buried Jesus, they wrapped him in a linen cloth and they put spices and herbs. But you know what? We have to have a wedding garment on. Jesus said in 14 of 6 of John that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said that I am the way, which is the door. And if we come in that door, we're going to get a wedding garment on anyways. When we come into this world naked, we're going to leave this world naked. And we've got to be clothed upon with the righteousness of fine linen in white and clean. You'll find that in Revelations 19 and 15. Isaiah 16 and 10 talks about the garment of salvation. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one word of this book is going to pass away, the Bible says. Through one man's disobedience that was Adam that disobeyed God in the garden brought death into the world. See, if we go to hell, we'll go to hell as an intruder. Hell was not made for man. It was made for the devil and his angels. But in Romans 5, 19, for as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so that the obedience of one, that's Jesus through the, to the cross, many will be made righteous. I write these things and I talk today to forewarn you. I wait to, as a watchman that's on the wall. If the sword comes, the Bible says, and the watchman does not speak to warn the wicked from his way. He said, upon my hands, he will require the blood. I know this might sound a little bit odd and out of the way. This is not religion. Jesus said, in Matthews 24 and 43, know this. You had better know this for yourself. I'm not talking about going to church for one day a year, one day a week. I'm talking about getting down on your knees and praying through. I'm talking about a change and a turnaround, and the Lord will help you. The last verse of Scripture I want to read is in Corinthians. I'm going to read this straight out of the authorized King James Bible. When I got the call at about 3 o'clock in the morning, it was a Sunday morning, and I couldn't believe my ears what I heard when I heard that my mom was burnt up in the fire. I believe my brother Bob told me, for real, Ron, for real. But the Lord had warned me ahead. About a year and a half ago, I dreamed a dream that I would walk into a house that was empty, and I was looking for my mom, and I couldn't find my mom, and the room was empty. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is the house that God lives. This is the house where the Spirit of God dwells in our hearts by faith. First, I'm going to read this verse of Scripture. Because when I heard this, that my mom had passed away in a fire, not only just my mom, but it was a tragedy. It's not a light thing to see someone burn to death. It's not a light thing to hear someone cry and couldn't get out of the fire in time. Oh. 
But the Bible says in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, if any man build this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and fire shall try every man's work. And where it says man in the Bible, you could substitute woman in the Bible. There is no difference between man and female in the Bible. He made us all equal in the Bible, equal heirs. He made the garden for Adam and Eve. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And fire shall try every man's work. Whoa. Fire tried your work, what sort it is. And he said, if a man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. This man suffered a great loss. <laughs> but he himself was saved, as yet so by fire. He said it should have been him in the fire. Know you not that you are the temples of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Closing with this scripture. And I want everyone here today to pray with me. Matthews 24 and 43. Jesus was warning his disciples from the mount of all of it. And he was telling them. Know this, it's the same knowing that as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be in this time. They did buy and sell. We get caught up with buying and selling cars, dope, trading this, women trafficking, and all the evil that even the government's involved in on making money giving the licenses to these chemists to make dope, knowing good and well the dope is going to cause fatalities and addiction. 72,000 addicted to methamphetamines and, 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 and of opiates died in the United States alone in, 19, in 2020. But Jesus said, know this, that if the good man, if, if you're the household leader in your house, then you're the good man of the house. If you're the leader and you're the only female in your house, then you're the good man of the house. Know this, Jesus said. If you had known what watch the thief would have come, you would have watched and you would not have suffered your house to be broken up. Uh, another scripture in the same parallel gospel says broken through. You don't know when the thief is going to come. John 10.10 10 says that the thief, God didn't do this. God didn't burn that fire and cause those souls to be lost. The Bible said your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion seeking to whom he may destroy. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, that I'm come to give you life. And I'm come to give you life more abundantly. The Bible says enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. My mother has crossed over, and I assure you, Praise God that she's in the garden of heaven, walking and smelling the most beautiful, fragrant flowers there is. But we on earth, as earthlings, we must struggle and strive to get free of the elements and the bondages here on the earth. Because we got but a short time. Everybody with me, bow your heads and please be reverent and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I welcome you into my heart and I believe that you died and rose for me on the third day and I believe in the shed blood of Christ on the cross of Calvary 
and I confess with my mouth, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, believe in my heart that I am saved. I am saved. Amen. Amen. Susie, will you come and sing the final songs? And this is my wife, Susie. Just to gaze upon your glory, Lord, and to sing to you this song.